The media team risked their lives every hour and daily, but the goal was clear, uh, the world must see the truth. Of course, nowadays in Russia, conspiracy theories, alternative truths and completely absurdity are presented to the audience under uh, the geese of documentary. Of course, the world cinematic community has finally turned its attention to Ukraine. We are now firmly placed on the world cinema map. Hello and welcome to Ukrainian Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euroland Course. And I'm your host, Matt Wickham. In this episode, we discuss Ukraine's first Oscar for the documentary film 20 Days in Mariupol with Dmitry Desartuk, film critic and journalist and UCMC's analyst, Anastasia Ratieva. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and don't forget to press subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Our first exit speaker, Nastia, sheds light on the courageous work of the documentary makers led by Mitislav Chernov. The film draws on Chernov's daily news dispatches and personal footage of his own country at war, and the filmmakers who risked their lives to document the truth behind Russia's heinous crimes unfolding in Mariupol. Nastia underscores how Russia has employed cinematic disinformation, manipulating narratives to deceive the audience. Let's take a listen. Oscar for 20 days in Mariupol is essential because every voice of truth is critical when we speak to the world's auditory. Uh, there are facts on our side and uh, truth was not given easily as the team of the film were trapped in Mariupol, surrounded by Russian uh, occupiers during the siege of the city in 2022. In those conditions, they continued to record on camera and uh, document to the crimes of the Russians, their documentarians managed to send about 10 percent, only 10 percent of the filmed materials from the only point in the city where with a mobile signal. Um, the team took our uh, out uh, 30 hours of video to the humanitarian corridor. Uh, the media team risked their lives every hour and daily, but the goal was clear. Uh, the world must see the truth. And uh, the war has seen the truth, and the Russian propaganda reaction began quickly. Uh, the main narrative about 20 days in Mariupol is that the film is a lie. Uh, however, we know who has used their film industry for two years now to reinforce the alternative reality. Uh, Russian films such as uh, Witness are a great example of this. Um, Another narrative, uh, which um, imp improved by Medvedev, for example, is complaining for uh, even more distribution of pseudo documentaries among Russian and international festivals and filming even more. Of course, nowadays in Russia, conspiracy theories, alternative truths, and completely absurdity are presented to the audience under uh, the geese of documentary. Um, the time of Heroes Festival for example, which, uh, were, uh, which took part in, um, in February 2024. Um, its uh, festival shortlist includes the film The Armored Barons of Ukraine, which, uh, in which the authors investigate the smuggling of weapons supplied by the West to Ukraine to hotspots worldwide. Uh, just absurdity. And um, the Russia has tools to discredit uh, film produced by Ukraine 20 Day in Mariupol, unfortunately. Um, and often, often these tools are living people, are human beings. In particular, they use Mariana Vishimirska. Another name is Podgurska, Mariana Podgurska. Uh, she appeared in the footage after the airstrike on the maternity hospital in Mariupol back in 2022, which was taken by Eugenie Maletka, who is now uh, the part of uh, the 2020. 20 days of Mariupol creation team. Uh, in general, Mariana is an example of a victim of Russian regime. The woman was a blogger, then came under fire and in famous pictures. 
and Russian propaganda took her as hostage. Uh, she moved to, to live in the Russian Federation, and uh, first uh, is she called herself a politician in the videos. It is now not known who filmed those videos and uh, what she actually said on them, because there are many collages. And uh, after that, uh, she fully supported Russian propaganda. She supported Vladimir Putin uh, as a candidate for president election uh, of the Russian Federation, uh, now gives an interviews and calls uh, 20 days in Mariupol propaganda and a parade uh, of hypocrisy. And it's a pity that young woman is being used so clearly. Uh, before the war, she ran a blog about cosmetics and motherhood and was a model and now she runs a channel where she seems to write an analysis, analysis on the topic of Avdivka, talks about the the alley of angels of Donbass and other things that could write any odious propagandist. And it's just sad that real human beings become tools in Russian propaganda, tools which help Russian alternative reality have a chance to be believed in. We asked Dmitry Tesseturuk, film critic and journalist, how he would characterize the competition and Ukraine's efforts to win an Oscar, and whether Ukrainian films before 20 Days in Mariupol were ever considered competitive in the international arena. Let's take a listen. Ukraine is doing what it can, of course, as far as I remember, an Oscar nomination has become a noticeable factor in the Ukrainian film industry since 2014, when there was a famous scandal with the nomination of The Guide and the non-nomination of The Tribe. Then the Oscar committee was dissolved and reformed. Certain rules for electing its members, nominating films, etc. were introduced. So, this has been ongoing for the last 10 years, and every year the Oscar committee nominates films from Ukraine for the Oscars. Another thing is how effective it is. This is a question not for the Oscar committee, but for the international competition for this award. In my opinion, Ukrainian films have been more or less competitive for the last 10 years. For example, I'm still sure that in 2014 we missed a good opportunity to get at least the first Oscar nomination in the history of Ukrainian cinema if we had sent not the guide, but the tribe, because the tribe was very interesting and original, had a lot of international awards and was noticed by the international film press, and it could have made it to a shortlist and maybe even a nomination. Whether it would have received an award is another question, but then it would certainly have been a breakthrough. But what happened, happened. And I was in the Oscar committee for six years in a row. If not every year, then every few years, we have a full-length feature film or a full-length documentary that had a chance to reach a certain level in this award. But Ukrainian cin cinematography as a film industry, as a phenomenon, has emerged really over the last 10 years. Before that, we had the post-Soviet crisis situation and we had no time for the Oscar. This is a separate topic that can be talked about for a long time. In any case, in the last 10 years, there have been films that could pass, but in order for it to be noticed in such a tough competition, and the Oscars is a very tough competition, there are a lot of contenders, a lot of countries and directors. To be noticed in this fight, you have to be noticeable. People have to get used to you, so to speak, to your existence. And here, of course, we are all in many ways just one of those Eastern European cinemas that exist somewhere do something, but do not affect the world altogether. So we had to pay a big, even, I would say, terrible price to ultimately get noticed. But that's another issue. Dimitro delves into the significance of offerings to the prestigious American Film Academy, emphasizing the value directors and films bring to the Oscars. Through an exploration of 20 Days in Mariupol, he unravels the unique blend of reportage and thriller elements crafted by Chernov, delving into the film's intricate narrative structure and the emotional 
resonance, it evokes a mist the backdrop of Russia's full-scale invasion. Let's take a listen. At the Oscars, as everywhere perhaps, the award given by the American Film Academy is undoubtedly the most prestigious in the world. However, what is important is what a director, a particular film or a certain film industry can offer to the Oscars, that is, to the American Film Academy. The uniqueness of 20 Days in Mariupol lies primarily in its absolute reportage approach, meaning a film made by reporters combined with an active lyrical hero. This is indeed a contentious blend that could have easily marred the film in less capable hands. Typically, reportage suggests that a reporter merely observes, refrains from interfering much, and does not delve into personal narratives. However, here something different unfolds. Mustaslav Chernov not only portrays the story of a city ravaged by Russian invaders, but also introduces a storyline reminiscent of a thriller, even a struggle of the film crew for survival and the transmission of information. We witness not only the destruction of Mariupol, but also find ourselves emotionally invested in the fate of the film crew. At the outset, a plot hook is introduced when two Russian tanks appear, firing and targeting the houses near the hospital where the crew is stationed. We are left on an edge, uncertain about their survival or potential capture, even though we know that they must have survived if the movie was completed. The tension is palpable. Thus, there emerged two storylines, that of the city and that of the film crew. The third storyline is Mladislav Chernov's first-person off-screen narration. He shares not only what was witnessed, but also his experiences, reflections and thoughts on what he will tell his children and his efforts to halt this madness. He embodies the lyrical hero who remains ever-present, infusing the narrative with his emotions and perspective. These three storylines intricately weave together into an inseparable whole, showcasing a compelling approach that is not often encountered. While it may appear simple at first glance, it takes immense talent to blend and construct three such plots into a coherent and impactful narrative. To finish off this episode, Dimitro tells us of the significance of this event, in particular for Ukraine, telling how it has finally put Ukraine on the world cinema map, and Ukrainians have now established their presence in the industry. Of course, the world cinematic community has finally turned its attention to Ukraine. We are now firmly placed on the world cinema map. We are no longer a blank spot. With an Oscar-winning film, we have firmly established our presence. This recognition signifies more than just noticing the film. It signifies noticing us as a nation. This is an immense boost for Ukrainian cinema. With an Oscar under our belt, we have a clear direction for our efforts, an incentive to strive for greatness. This approval extends beyond Chernov. It's a validation for all of us. Thus, I believe it will serve as a powerful emotional and moral stimulus, particular for Ukrainian documentaries, to further develop, experiment, explore new forms and find innovative ways of resistance. Undoubtedly, it's a significant motivating factor. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euralantic Course, dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!